You don't have to go and research each individual religion to prove its wrongness. You disprove one, you just disprove the idea of a god, and they're all gone. I mean, really, there is no one startlingly unique religion that shines above all others. They're, 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 they're all in a scrum together. They all borrow each other's books and gods, and they're all equally deluded as far as I can tell. I went through counselling, um, you know, exorcisms and all sorts of things to try and really make it right or try every possible avenue um, to so-called make myself straight. The purpose of this film was simple. It was asking the question, can you be gay and formally religious? It seems simple. My faith gives me, sometimes it doesn't give me a whole lot, sometimes it gives me the power to keep on going and trying when I'm most likely to give up or most wanting to give up. Of course you can reconcile uh, spirituality and religion with human sexual variations. Uh, I think that is the essential problem that uh, the Christian churches now have, they've come to a point um, that uh, they accept that you cannot discriminate against people who are um, gay or sexual minorities, but they are preaching a doctrine that such people have to have a completely sexless life, which is completely unnatural. Forms of human sexuality that fall outside the prescribed norms of heterosexual behaviour actually threaten social cohesion. Certainly in traditional cultures now, much less so in the modern world, but people still defend traditional patterns. But uh, yeah, same-sex activity or non-normative heterosexual behaviour is very, very hard for religion to accommodate. In fact, I don't think it really can accommodate it. Well, basically, a church tells you, if you want to be gay, gays are immoral and perverted and degenerate and filthy, and that's what you're going to become. I really don't want a bar of any organised religion, and I really think the Bible is the most vile, nasty, bloodthirsty book I've ever read, and kiddies should not be exposed to it. <laughs> I wanted this documentary to be about many belief systems, but I was soundly criticised for wanting to interview a Raelian. Some people thought Raelians were nutty because they believed in aliens who like to stop on volcanoes and chat with humans about their high-tech plans. But these very same people thought, believing in chatting with burning bushes, Jehovah's Witnesses who believed that only exactly 144,000 people would go to heaven, among many other beliefs, were quite sane, simply because a lot of people believed it. Is there a number of followers required to turn a belief from nutty into an acceptable mass delusion? When uh, people encounter new ideas, uh, they're often dismissed as being kooky and radical and, um, you know, it's nutters involved and uh, that it's a cult or a sect, etc. They tend to forget that all religions started out as cults and sects. Catholicism is nothing more than a successful cult. And the, the pastor of the church would quite frequently talk about, you know, in my mind as a little kid it was almost like the top ten sin list and that was, you know, prostitutes and drug addicts and, and homosexuals. So on these endless Sunday mornings, I'd be sitting there listening to just how evil uh, these mincing predators were. I was thinking, 
how could I possibly be one of these monstrous people? I don't feel like I'm anything like that. And yet I am. I'd fall in love with a man. And I was forced to face reality. And the reality was 22 years of doing everything possible had actually changed nothing. And up to that point, I was fighting it. From that point, I realised I can't change it. And from that point, I couldn't preach anymore. So I confessed to the National Executive of the Assemblies of God and to my friends and the leadership at that particular time said, to show that you are truly repentant, then you need to do a public confession. The reason why I still have my faith and I still have my beliefs is, is because God is, God is my everything I, I believe in him. I, you know, he's so real to me. He is such a huge part of my life and, and for me to ignore him and for me to pretend he's, he's not there would be almost me living a lie. It's I wish this is true, I hope this is true, and my hope and my wish for this to be true is so strong that I believe that it is. But it's all based on wishing and hoping and not necessarily on reality. I mean, I saw um, a sign today that was talking about faith, and it's what did it say? Faith is making your soul believe beyond what your eyes can see. And I went to Christian counselors and all sorts of other people, and this Christian counselor was very much about, um, he was so terrified of having a live gay man in his room that he would just be talking about his dog and about the baby Jesus, and it was quite odd, so I didn't get much out of that either. There, it couldn't be there without a God saying that it's okay. <laughs>